Welcome to my quick explain channel. In this video, I will show you how can you create your API service using Go programming language. And there are a lot of packages that allow you to create your own API service. And in this video, I will explain you how to use Go Fiber. At the main page of Fiber, you can see that it has robust routing. You can serve static files with it and it's also extreme performant compared to other HTTP packages. Fiber is the perfect choice for building REST APIs. It also has flexible middleware support where you can debug all your requests or, for example, check for authorization and, for example, reject any requests without JWT token. If you want to make a simple API, Fiber is a good choice because it's really easy to learn. Also, in Fiber you can use template engines, Fiber supports WebSocket and Rate Limiter. At the bottom of the gofiber.io page you can see some examples of how other people used Fiber and I recommend you deep dive into these examples if you want to learn more about Fiber and how you can create your own API services. And to get started, I will show you how can you use Fiber in Go programming language. First, let's initialize our new module. Go mod init and the name of our module. Then we can paste example from the main page of Fiber that will return hello world string on get request to the root of our API. Let's save this and to use Go Fiber, we have to run Go get github.com go fiber fiber v2 after that we can run go run main.go and after running my program i will prompt it with request from windows defender firewall if you're not gonna use your api from other devices in your local network you can click simply cancel and then we can open postman to test our API. As you can see, when I send a GET request to localhost 3000, I get hello world string. And in our code, we created a new Fiber instance. Then we specify which methods we will handle on the chosen path. And then we specify a handler function that will handle requests to our REST API. And then we specify the port that our Fiber instance will listen to requests from. To specify another route and handle it, we can type app dot and use one of the following HTTP methods. We can simply copy this example and go back to our code. In main.go, we will paste these two handlers and restart our Go program. After that, let's go to our postman and paste a new path. When sending get request, we get I'm a GET request and if we want to send POST request we can see that method is not allowed we can switch to POST request and POST request will return our result it's a good practice to put your handlers into another package that will contain some file like list handlers go and handler function will be specified in these files package handlers and then func get all list or maybe get full list will return the following string and in main.go file we can then import our our new package handlers by typing quick explain go fiber dash one handlers and then in listeners we can type handlers dot get full list let's do the same for our register function we can create a new file auth handlers go and then in the same package handlers we can create a new function that will handler registration and in main.go we can use handlers dot registration and if we will restart the program we will see that nothing is changed let's send request and as you can see i'm post request then get request to api list and we see that i'm a get request sent successfully 
Now as we know how to handle GET and POST requests, let's dive deeper into parameters that we can provide when making requests. I will copy all this code snippet and paste it into my application. After that I will rename some of the paths so it will be easier for you to distinguish them. Now let's save the file and stop our program and restart it. First of all you can have required parameters in your path and in Postman you can specify name and title like Go Fiber. After sending this request we can see name first and parameter title second. So basically it is the same that we would specify this and this where quick explain and go fiber are optional parameters and these optional parameters quick explain and go fiber can be accessed by names now let's make a request to user plus and as you can see user plus must have something after the first slash because plus is not optional it means that you have to type something instead of this plus sign so then i can type like some numbers and i get these numbers back and i also can have another path and something after the next slash and it all will be printed out because plus is greedy if you want to use optional parameters you can specify user opt Sending this request will not be succeeded because we have to use only one value after the first slash. So we can remove this part and then our request will be succeeded. But also we can remove this optional parameter and send request try to use user opt. So and we can see that name is an optional parameter and it will not return an error when we not specifying our name because it's optional parameter then you can type user as with asterisk yeah this means it will be greedy but optional so when we used plus sign we couldn't make this request but now it's okay so we can specify something like that send this request and everything will be captured so maybe in some cases you want to use this approach so as you can remember when we use plus sign we cannot just get user plus we have to specify something after that and also you are able to escape your characters for example in this case we can send our request to the following path that contains colon and as we escaped our colon we can use it in our request you may also want to get query parameters from users requests query parameters are key value pairs when you have key and value separated by equal sign and you can specify several key value pairs separating them by ampersands i asked chatgpd how to parse query parameters and let's copy its example and paste to our code and let's make query params as a path and open our postman but you should always restart your application after adding new route handlers so let's write localhost 3000 query params and paste our string that we specified before after sending this request we can see that we successfully got all params from our query simply assign values of the query to variables t q a t b and i a and then we just return them in our response it's also a useful tip to use groups in your fiber for example you can handle all requests to your api by creating a new group and then create a new group version 1 by typing api dot group v1 where your middleware will be used and in this group you specify request type and path and also handler functions so you don't have to specify everywhere slash api slash v1 and you can use your group to 
specify only the path that differs in this group and the same way API v2 is built. Let's go back to our code. Usually you don't want to return a plain string like in this example. I think most often you want to return JSON and maybe you will parse this JSON on the front end and use some values from it. So let's rewrite this function that returns our query params and we will return JSON instead of this string. So as you can see, if you are using Copilot, it makes really easy for you to explore new features of package that you are using. Now let's save this code and go to our postman. Let's send the request again. And yeah, I forgot to restart our program. And now we can see that response body is in JSON and not in plain text. We can also create a new type user that will have name and age. Then in our request, let's say user JSON. And here we will return our user with name and age. So simply to return JSON, we use c.json. And in this case, Fiber will automatically set headers to mention that response body will be in JSON format. So let's copy this path and make a request to it. But first, let's restart our program. So as you can see, we're returning our custom struct as a JSON in the response to get request. Also, it's important to know that you can use middlewares in your Fiber instance and middlewares is what will be executed on every request in your application on routes that are specified after the app.use. So if you specify your middleware function here, then all requests that specified below will be handled using this middleware. You can use middleware, for example, for course. You can allow so some origins, so you can make requests from, brow from the browser, from certain domains, and also allow headers. You can make JWT middleware to check if the user is authorized or not, but it's important to add corresponding header that is allowed. And the header, if I'm not mistaken, is authorization. And as you may have noticed, you always should return cnext in your middleware function to go to the next middleware. As an example, I will show you how you can create JWT middleware that will check if a user sends request with JWT token in authorization header. And first, let's see what this code does. First of all, we write our authorization JWT token to out header. And then if the header is empty, is missing, then we will return new error. Then we extract token string. So this will be JWT token from our out header. We are doing this because out header actually has bearer word at the beginning. So it is a bearer token. But be careful with this syntax because if your auth header string will be shorter than this word, then you will get panic from Go. Next, we are parsing our JWT token with our secret key using this package. Actually, this package is outdated, but that doesn't matter in this case. And then we just check if the token is valid. And if everything goes well, we will store our JWT token in our context for future use. And then we'll just run c.next. I will omit this part of snippet because this is not the video about JWT token. And then we will simply check if there is an auth header in our request. After we assign this function to our JWT middleware variable, we use this variable in app.use and then we specify all endpoints that will run without JWT middleware. So this handler will run only after this JWT middleware. And if user accessing our endpoint without authorization header, it will get an error unauthorized. Now let's copy this part of code and paste it in 
main function. As I told, we will remove everything from here and we'll simply check if the auth header was specified. Now we can define our endpoints that will require JWT middleware to run before actual handler in handler func. Let's write user protected. You are authorized to see this. That's it. So now let's save and restart our Go application. And now if we send request to our user slash JSON, it allows us to access this endpoint without authorization. But after we specify app.use and middleware function, all defined endpoints will require authorization header. So, pro. so if I access protected, I will see an error message unauthorized missing authorization header. And as you can see, we get corresponding HTTP request code. Now we can go to auth tab and select bearer token. We can type 1234, send, and then we see that we are authorized to see this. We can also serve static files with app.static, then specify a path and a directory that contains your files. Also, you can serve files from multiple directories. If you want to learn more about Fiber, you should definitely open documentation and deep dive into it. I hope you like this video and that's it. See you in the next video.